So I'm going to talk. So I'm going to talk about MongoSM, uh, or as Ian likes to call it, Mong, o, Mong OSM, um, which is a project that uh, Ian and I have been working on for a while. So we'll start. Um, so when I think about well, when we think about OSM, there's lots of components, right? There's there's our data, there's our rendering, there's our tiles, there's our search, there's our licenses, our community, all that stuff. Uh, but I think mostly about the data. Um, I think about the data storage, I think about the representation, I think about our data formats, I think about our XML, um, and I think about our database. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, I think about our data access, which includes our API, how we internally structure our data for export, um, our database, our file formats, and our storage. Uh, and our current way of handling our database is PostGIS. Uh, all of OSM data is in PostGIS. Uh, it's a free software program. It's well tested. It's standard. It's serious. It's got a lot of features, uh, especially post G uh, the GIS version for the GIS professionals. It's got many features. It's wonderful. It's the standard. Um, it's also a standard relational database. That means it, you know, it's got ACID. It's uh, consistent. It's got SQL. It's supposed to be normalized, and it has tables and rows and columns. Um, and that's interesting, but I think um, it's time to experiment a little bit. So uh, I've been experimenting with post-relational databases. Um, and these relational and these post-relational databases have interesting features like that they're distributed, um, they're heavily scalable, they're very fast, um, they're lightweight, and uh, they can store different types of, of structures than a traditional table-based relational database. Um, the one I've been playing in the most is MongoDB. Uh, MongoDB has lots of features. Uh, it's very, very fast. It's, it supports sharding. It supports uh, MapReduce functionality. It has high availability and replication. Um, it does have some geo functionality. It supports rich queries, and uh, it's just a great database. So uh, Ian and I have both uh, been working on this project called Mongo, well, sorry, I misspelled it, Mongo SM, uh, which is a MongoDB backend database written in Python with a currently a Django front end. Um, we are going to support the full X API soon, but we currently don't. Uh, we currently support a subset of the standard API with just box get queries. Um, but basically, Mongo SM is a platform for fun. It's a platform for experimentation um, in, in what we can do with the data. Um, our schema supports a direct lookup. Uh, so, so the internal schema supports direct lookup for objects. We use a, a location-based index, and currently we support object lookup hints, which means that we can we can do things like reverse. Uh, so if we look up a way. We can see, of course, all the nodes that belong to it, but we can also do the reverse. If we say look at a node, we can say all the, the ways and relations that it belongs to. Um, currently, we don't support this, but we will in the future support full history support. Uh, of course, we'll first support the XAPI fully, uh, but in the schema, we'll, we'll do full history support, and we're looking at possibly doing single complex object queries, which means that if I request a way in one result, I could get all the components of that way. So all the nodes in one single request. Um, and we don't currently support that, but that's something that we've been looking at possibly supporting in the next, uh, in the future. Um, so Mongo SM is fun. It's experimental. It's Python. It's componentized. It's awesome. Um, but it's really just a piece of something else, uh, something bigger, um, which is really thinking about how we think about uh, OSM. And, and how we think about some of the low-level parts of OSM, the low-level protocols, the data representation, all those components. And, and, and that's something that I think you know, is not discussed enough. We, we talk a lot about the high level. We talk about routing, and we talk about rendering. But we don't really dig too deep into the, into the nitty-gritty. Um, so I like to think about you know, other issues, like the, uh, the fact that we almost always represent OSM and XML. Um, XML is great, it's regular, it's structured, it's easily parsed, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's also verbose, clunky, and slow. Uh, so, you know, there are, other, there are other ways we could represent, you know, the same data. Um, 
Carnagen, for example, supports uh, JSON. Uh, we could also support JSON in Mongo SM um, if we wanted, and I think we're thinking about that. Um, and other people are playing with new formats. There's a, a new binary format that people have been have been really jazzed up about. And I think that you know this this is just a part of the way to think about data in in, in ways that we haven't before. Um, other issues that I think people should be playing with are uh, the API. There's a lot of experimentation that we could be doing that we're not. Um, Things like WebSockets and Comet could be used with the API to give you real-time updates of changes um, as a web client, um, or even as a uh, on the current renderer, uh, you could be v visiting the website and actually see changes happening. But no one's no one's doing that. Um, we haven't played at all with aggregation. Uh, you know, our current aggregation mechanism is we do minutely updates. That's kind of clunky. Um, I think I think we could do better. Uh, you know, nominatum is awesome, uh, but and search is really important. And search isn't really being talked about very much. I think we should be hacking on search. And I think we uh, and this was touched on more in the state of the map in Girona. Um, tagging and interna internationalization is a real issue. Um, it's an issue culturally, and it's an also issue practically. Um, making maps between languages, making maps between concepts and distances and all those, I think those are all part of something that we should be playing with. Um, basically my point is that hacking OpenStreetMap is fun and we don't do enough of it. We don't, we don't do enough of the low level uh, nitty gritty hacking and I think that's really what Mongo SM is about, I think that's what I'm about and I want to see more of that. Um, so that's pretty much it other than questions. Sure, David. Uh, I didn't see you say MapReduce twice. What was the MapReduce functionality that you talked about in uh, Mongo? Oh, so so in MongoDB, um, we can you can take a query uh, and farm it out to all the nodes, uh, the hosts that are running the the database instance, and have it re uh, return the result in a MapReduce functionality. Uh, and and then those queries can are done in JSON, so they're fairly easy for other people to hack on. So do you see applications for that in, in distributing the rendering? Files? No, no, that's not the kind of that's not that's not the type of MapReduce we're talking about. We're talking about uh, MapReduce against data type MapReduce, just res results in query. It's the same as a database query. Right? You wouldn't you wouldn't put a renderer in a database. So this is just about. But you could do something like show me all of the. Uh, the nodes or the objects in a bounding box that meet these following X criteria, but instead of having to do that at some high level, you could have the database do that. And the nice part here is that if you did that, you could be farming that query out to lots and lots of machines, and that's just, just generally better. Um, and so it, it, le it leads to more interesting queries and more interesting uh, uh, sectioning up of the data. Questions? Yeah. Uh, we've experimented a bunch with the Twitter Firehose feature over the last few months, which mm -hmm. is sort of a consistent or stay up TCP connection. Right. Which is basically every single thing that passes through Twitter. And I wonder if the OSM servers could handle something like that so that you could, for example, set up like a MongoDB mirror off to the side that would create this functionality without, you know, interrupting the base server with too much novelty. Right. So I think that, that what you're touching on is that OSM, that we need to have more OSM mirrors and they need to be able to be accessed and do more interesting things and experiment with those kind of features and, and, and comment and, and, or possibly XMPP feeds or, you know, a numer you know, number of different ways we could be distributing that data and I agree with you. Uh, and I also agree with you that it's probably, it wouldn't probably be appropriate to run them on the main OSM servers at this time. But experimentation is what it's all about. You mentioned sharding. Uh, what is that? Um, that means that uh, so OSM, the full planet is quite large. Um, it's beyond the means of most people to have a server that large. Uh, with sharding, we can have lots of small servers. Okay. And we can distribute the database across those servers, and we can distribute queries across those servers, and it all just works. So, any other questions? Great, thank you.